Greetings, people, and welcome back. This is part four of What If Female Deku Was a Ghoul. Now, I believe where we last... <coughs> on, actually, before we begin, I've seen a comment in there, in, on the last video, by, um, give me a minute, by, um, this person, I'm not going to try and pronounce their username because I'm probably going to butcher it. <clears throat> but they had suggested that I um, combine the two. So I thought that was a pretty good idea and about four people thought it was as well. So I'm going to do that, try that as well. So our code name will be the Ghoul of a Thousand Cuts Dragonfly. <clears throat> anyway, continuing forward. So we'll begin at the um, USJ incident, as Aizawa is jumping down <clears throat> to fight the villains, as Izumi and Keia pull up, use their Kaganes, bring out their respective Kaganes, as they are getting into a quite defense, defensive position. As, um, a couple of villains would have gone past Aizawa to try and get to them. But those villains were quickly dispatched of by Izumi and Keia. Until they noticed a few of them were using Queen Kays. <clears throat> As Izumi is thinking, this must be the, fa this must be the uh, separate faction from the CCG. Uh, they are quite well versed in using these uh, Queen Kays, but they are quickly dispatched of. As one of them is watching this unfold, as he has a fairly large uh, suitcase with him. <coughs> as um, Izumi and Kea would continue to. Dispatch of them. <laughs> the they would eventually be warped away to different areas by Kurogiri, like in canon. Hold on, give me a minute. Sorry about that, I had to open up a drink. Anyway, continuing. <clears throat> um as Izumi and Kea. Izumi would be teleported to the um to the uh, mountain zone, the landslide zone that uh, I think it was Todoroki or Bakugo at, or Kirish or Bakugo and Kirishima were teleported to. As she would land down in the middle of a large group of villains, and these villains are thinking, <laughs> she's only she's only a lonely ghoul. We can deal with her. As they'd activate their quirks as. Even he would begin laughing as uh, she'd look at them as uh, she'd say, If you think I'm just a normal ghoul, ha a normal ghoul, then you are poorly mistaken, my dear friend. As uh, she'd bring out, use both her kaganes, her yukaku and her rinkaku. As uh, she would be battling against them, which she would win. In about a couple of seconds. As Izumi would also head, a, head around saving other people. Other students from these villains. And rogue CCG members. As they would all be taken down fairly quickly. As Izumi would make it to the middle. As she would notice that Kea was about to be attacked by the Nomu, with Izumi blitzing over there as she would slice off the Nomu's arm using her Yukaku and skid across the ground to move Kea away. As Shigaraki would see this, as Izumi does still, it's currently got both her Kaganes out. 
as they would say, as Shigaraki would say, that's her, that's the one we're after. No, me, deal with her. And as he would also point to the mysteri this mysterious man, as he'd say, and you, you can, you can assist the Nomu in this endeavor. As the man would say, with pleasure. As he would press a button on top of the suitcase, as um, a queen key would come out, as Izumi would see this queen key and realize that this, ma this man was using her was using her father's Hizashi's Kagane. It was Hizashi's Kagane that was turned into a Queen Key. Now I'm gonna quickly explain here. In case you guys were wondering what uh, Hizashi's Kagane was. Um Ka Hizashi's Kagane was sort of like a it was sort of like a to Toka the father's Kagane, except that his one made him look like a, an actual salamander. And he could also breathe fire with it. So that's sort of like what Hizashi's uh, Kagane and Kakuja look like. <clears throat> as Izumi would be enraged as she'd yell out, You bastard! As she dashed towards him in a blind rage. As the Nomu would try to stop her from getting, going through, getting to him, as she would smack it out of the way with her Rinkaku and basically clash into the uh, mysterious man. As the Kaganes, the Kagane and the Queen Kay are currently clashing with each other, as Izumi would use her acrobatics to the advantage, but having to deal with a Nomu and um, a trained investigator is quite difficult for her, as she would be sl she would be sidelined by the Nomu and then sla and then slashed by the Queen Kay, as she would then be thrown into the mountain area. Actually, like, into the mountain that was behind Shigaraki and Kurogiri. As the uh, rubble would have been, that would have been caused, would have basically buried Izumi. As everybody is, hor is just horrified by this, that a, the Nomu and this me, mysterious man managed to take out one of the strongest people in UA as the Nomu and his man would begin to approach Teya to eliminate her. As Izu we'll cut to Izumi, who is buried underneath the rubble. As she's sort of like in the same situation as Kaneki after he fought Orca. As she's thinking to herself, is this really how is this really how I die? Is this where I end? As she's then thinking to herself, thinking back to what Hizashi said to her years ago, saying that she is the only she's one of the only people who can bring the world of worlds of humans and ghouls together. As Izumi is thinking to herself, no, I will fulfill that dream. I will bring these two worlds together. I will protect them. As some, as her Kagane begins to form over her, as a loud explosion comes from the rubble, as the investigator and the Nomu and everybody there would look to where Izumi was and see this emerging from the rubble, as it would have, instead of like having, t it would have these eyes, the compound eyes that you see here, as 
one as actually it would have one compound eye in the center of its head as it would be in the same same type of fashion as a ghoul eye as they would let out a loud roar and immediately charge towards both the investigator and the nomu as this investigate the investigator would tr- the nomu would charge towards her basically trying to stop her but then it uses then Izumi uses this tail to Im- basically impale the nomu and throw it to the side as she would then charge towards the um the investigator and slam those arm those are blades it into the investigator which would send the investigator flying into Kurigiri as the investigator would would say I've never encountered a a Kakuja this powerful but it's going to be one hell of a challenge as Izumi would let let out another loud ear piercing roar as she would then charge towards the Nomu and basically tear it to shreds and devour it. As Shigaraki is beginning to scratch his neck as he's saying, No, no, no. That thing was supposed to kill All Might and it fell to and it fell to a simple Kakuja. <sighs> Kurigiri, we might need to retreat. As just before Shigaraki finishes his sentence, he gets lit up, lit up like he didn't cannon by snipe. As just as they were about to leap, they were about to escape. Izumi charged towards the investigator and slashed him on his back, leaving a massive scar. Along, leaving it like a very deep cut along his back, as he would yell out in pain as Kurigiri would close that portal. As Izumi would con- continue to basically be on a rampage, as Kea, Kea and her mother would arrive, as Kea, as she would ask what had happened as Kea would explain the entire situation and what happened. As they as uh, she Kea's mother would say that um Izumi's probably in the head of that thing. So we just need to cut off so we just need to cut through its head and get Izumi out of it. But it's not going to be a difficult. It's not going to be an easy task. So, do you think you're ready for this? As Kea would get up and activate her Kagune, as she would say, "Yes, mother." As they both charge towards Izumi, as Izumi, still being in a rampage state, would be attacking everything that basically moves. As as uh, she would see Kea and. Her mother approach, dashing towards her. As she would go for Kea's mother, since she was the primary threat. As she would base be using everything at her disposal: the uh, the legs, the bladed arms, the wings, the tail stinger. As Kea and her mother would basically systematically take out all of them. As Izumi's Kakuja body would be on on the ground, as is like basically squirming, as Kea's mother would basically split the Kakuja's head in half, as they would then pull Izumi out, as her costume, her bandages are now like you see in this picture right here, as Oh yeah, the roar was also quite distorted as well. As um, Izumi is basically unconscious right now from the amount of mental strain 
that situation I put on her. A uh, bunch of pro heroes were coming. A few of the pro heroes were coming to arrest Izumi because they thought that she was a villain. As uh, Kei's mother would stop them, as she would state that this is basic, this is normally what happens when a ghoul first goes into their Kakuja state. They have no control of themselves. And after that, they're usually passed out, so Izumi was not in control of that situation. And as Kei is basically, like, sort of, like, crate cradling either me, so basically one wondering if she's okay. And that is where I'm going to end this part off. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. I do hope you guys enjoyed the Kakuja. Because I worked really hard on thinking how I could integrate, how I could uh, get the, chak the Kakuja to work. So anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta.